Okay, I've got several things to share today that I've discovered in the last few days. Um, in my last video, I showed that you could take the guts out of a CFL. And in this circuit board were a lot of real fun parts. And uh, I made a uh, oscillator circuit with just using these parts in here. And uh, one of the commenters recommended that I take the two little chokes and uh, tape them together and wrap tinfoil around them and it enhanced the choke uh, combination, the little transformer for this circuit. And you can see that little LED blinking right there. And that's blinking off that little solar cell right there. The pencil, my thumb. And that came out of this. And this is a little uh, light that you can buy on eBay for a dollar. And they're, uh, they're actually very good and I highly recommend this product right here if you find it uh, and inside that is this little solar cell that's about a three and a half volt four volt solar cell and a rechargeable lithium battery that's not just an alkaline that's a rechargeable lithium about a three or four volt rechargeable lithium and to get just those two parts for a dollar hard to beat but anyway, this little solar cell off of this uh, runs this on just ambient room light. And uh, this is what it sounds like here. And that's just running on ambient light. And that's these two little chokes put side by side. Just use the... Uh, penny oscillator circuit and go back in my videos and find the penny oscillator circuit and then uh, just replace the two big coils uh, with these two little chokes and uh, works quite nicely but the other thing that I discovered on on this particular one here which came out of that bulb there there is a what's called a radial inductor which is this thing right here uh, these are axial inductors, and this is called a radial inductor. The wires are around this way. looks like that. And I thought, I wonder if I could make a pulse motor out of using that coil, if it would drive a rotor. In other words, replace the, the normal coil in a pulse motor with this, uh, this uh, inductor. And boy, did it work. <laughs> it worked really, really good. And that's a pulse motor there where I've taken that coil off of it and I replaced it with this inductor here which is a ferrite core copper wire wound inductor and I don't know the uh, rating on it but I tried several of these uh, these uh, radial inductors and the higher the the rating the better they work so um, anyway this is uh, running this pulse motor and it makes like a mechanical jewel thief. Here, I'll let you listen to it here, and I'll rev it up. Watch the LED when I rev this up. It makes pretty darn good jewel thief. And that's the flyback that you're seeing there. When that little inductor field collapses, that's the flyback that's causing that right there. thought that was a cool little project there. I worked on that yesterday and did that. <coughs> Replacing that coil there with this uh, radial inductor. You see how far away from the rotor that sits. And uh, that worked out really, really well. And so I just made up a little uh, thing for that. And the last thing I wanted to show here was these cells that IB Pointless has shown that are made out of Elmer's glue and a couple of dissimilar metals actually do work and uh, I've got this running the penny oscillator here and that is the one that's made out of uh, Epsom salts, the salt substitute and Elmer's white glue it was made back on the middle of July and months and months and months old but notice the oxidation on that the terminals do oxidize, 
but they seem to oxidize in such a way that it doesn't kill the cell. It doesn't, the electrolyte does not go to equilibrium like it would normally do on a normal uh, galvanic cell. What would happen is the reaction would neutralize and this would slowly drop off in power as the chemical reaction takes place and the uh, galvanic battery slowly winds down. But this is months old and a, a lot of my other type of uh, batteries, they would either dry out or the chemical reaction would ne neutralize and uh, it would just stop. But for some reason this is still going. And uh, if anybody has got one of these uh, blocking oscillators like this penny oscillator or that uh, a, uh, flat coil thing that I showed, uh, Tesla coil kind of thing, these glue cells uh, will run it. And I was real surprised. I pulled several, several of them out and uh, they're still alive and they're months old and uh, there's just enough micro wattage out of one of these things to run all these little blocking oscillators. So anyway, I, I thought this was kind of fun stuff that uh, yeah, that's, that's Penny running away there. Penny number two. That's running off a glue battery plain old Elmer's white glue battery with the Epsom salts, the salt substitute, magnesium and copper. There's a green oxide that forms on the copper electrode and a whitish crystalline oxide that forms on the magnesium. But like I say, normally these would just uh, wind down and stop. And for some reason, these don't. This particular one, you can short them out, leave it shorted for a long time, unshort it, and the voltage is right there again. There's very, very little amperage. But if you got something that'll work off that, like one of these oscillators, you get away with using it. What I've been trying to do is get one of those to run one of these, and there's just not enough power. You need uh, you need a volt at least with about 10 milliamps to run something like this. And you'd have to get a, a better inductor situation a smaller rotor, much lighter, and maybe even run it in a vacuum to be able to use one of those cells and actually move a mass because uh, it takes power to move a mass. Anyway, that's what I've been uh, working on. Hope everybody else is having fun with these projects. I sure am. Thanks for watching.